Hello, Miss Pneumatic here. Today, we will be studying about vacuum pads that inhale and lift objects connected to pneumatic products, like vacuum generators. We will study how vacuum pad lifts objects and how to select which vacuum pad to use. If you are interested in vacuum pad, please pay attention. Okay then. Let's start Ms. Pneumatic's vacuum pad video. First, let's find out how vacuum pad absorbs and lifts objects. If you see vacuum pad closely, you can see an empty space inside and a hole that connects vacuum pad to other machines, such as vacuum generators. If you turn on the vacuum generator, the air will be sucked up and air pressure of empty space inside the pad will go down. Also, since the object and vacuum pad are tightly attached, external air cannot enter the vacuum pad and the pad's empty space remains lower in pressure than the outside. Now, the external pressure of the pad is greater than the internal pressure. So, as the force is applied from the outside of the pad to the inside and the object is attached to the pad and lifted, then what should I consider when choosing this vacuum pad? First, you must determine the area of the pad, comparing object's weight and absorption rate. When the pad is circular, the formula for determining the absorption of the pad is as follows. Pad's absorption rate W equals area of the pad A times vacuum pressure P times 0.1 times safety rate. The equation above shows that the absorption force of the pad is proportional to the area of the pad and the vacuum pressure. The absorption force of the pad must be greater than the weight of the product to lift the product. So, you can find out the minimum absorption force if you know the weight of the product. For example, let's say we lift the object weighing 4 kilograms. 4 kilograms is approximately 40 newtons, so you can substitute 40 newton for the absorption force of the pad. Also, you can calculate the area of pad A from W and P because vacuum pressure P is a part of the process. But what is the safety rate here? If you absorb an object with actual pad, the pad is pressed, but the entire area of the pad would not attach perfectly to the area surface. In addition, since the friction force occurs between the pad and the object, it is necessary to obtain a safe absorption power that the actual pad could lift. When you do it, you need to calculate with safety rate considering these factors. Generally, the horizontal object's safety rate is 0.25. The vertical object's safety rate is 0.125. When you apply these variables to the equation, you can find out the absorption force when the pad is safely absorbed to the object and lifted. By this way, you can get the area of the vacuum pad by inserting weight of the object, pressure of vacuum pad by using the equation above. Second, you must choose the right type of pad depending on the working environment. Vacuum pad is usually made with various rubber ingredients, such as nitrogen, fluorine, silicon, and urethane. You must be able to choose the right type of pad depending on the working environment because each rubber has its own characteristics. Nitrogen rubber has strong general and abrasion durability, so it can be used in various usages. Nitrogen is fit to make vacuum environment because it blocks gas penetration, but it is fragile to heat and ozone and has hard time lifting materials with uneven surface. Fluorine rubber is an appropriate material to be used in harsh environment because it has resistance against oil, heat, and chemical substances. But fluorine is inappropriate materials to use with some other chemical substances. Silicon rubber has a great resistance against electric insulation and alkalinity and is fit for FDA and Food Sanitation Act, but it lacks abrasion durability. Urethane rubber has strong mechanical strength and abrasion durability, but is inappropriate in hot and humid environment because urethane is weak to steam and hot water. 
Also, it is vulnerable to acidity and alkalinity, like I explained. There are various kinds of pads depending on various materials and working environment. Please notify that the characteristics of each rubber can be different depending on manufacturers. Third, you should be able to choose right shape of pad depending on shape of the object. It is released in various shapes to cope with various objects. For instance, a round shape pad is fit for carrying thick and flat objects. An oval shape pad is fit for carrying long and narrow objects, like boards. Thin type of pad is fit for light and slim objects such as paper and vinyl. Bellows type of pad is fit for carrying objects that have slant of surface. Let's choose the right pad type for the product to be lifted in the process. Lastly, since there are various accessories for using vacuum pads, such as spring, you can raise work efficiency using those accessories depending on various situations. Especially, spring can be handy carrying products when you need to attach the products long time. Today, we have studied about vacuum pad. The transfer of products using vacuum pads is advantageous in the process of transferring materials that are vulnerable to scratches. As I said before, there are many types of vacuum pads, so it is possible to deal with products with various shapes for various strengths. Various industries use transfer system using vacuum pad. Today, we have studied about vacuum pad. Was it helpful understanding the characteristics of vacuum pad? Ms. Pneumatic will always be on your side studying fields of pneumatic. Please subscribe channel and click like this video clip. Thanks for watching. Mrs. Pneumatics is in collaboration with KCC, a specialized pneumatics corporation.